you very much. Thank you, Father Jenkins. Thank you, Chairman Nordic. And all the members of the Republic uh, Committee. I am enormously honored for this award, which I receive with sincere humility and gratitude. Humility and gratitude are not formulaic words for me today. But I received the letter from Notre Dame, notifying me of the Vatara Medal, and I read the noble criteria for the award. I felt the same emotions I do kneeling at Mass every Sunday. First, a deep sense of my own unworthiness. Dominic and non sum dignus, all that I am not worthy. And then gratitude for such undeserved grace. The parents and the grandparents in the audience will probably remember the old Latin mass when we quite literally beat on our breasts as we repeated those words. Don't let sum dignus. Uh, even though we now live in a culture of boundless self-esteem, I am extensive enough to believe that it's not a bad idea occasionally to recognize our own unworthiness. If only because of recognition that just appreciate how much we depend on the love, understanding, and forgiveness of others. Much of what is best in our lives, we owe to God, our parents, families, teachers, and friends. Humility leads us to gratitude. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not entirely a visitor. I served for six years uh, in Washington, D.C. as the chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. I hope that anyone who spends six years in Washington working for the federal government deserves a medal. Uh, it's probably not such a nice gold one. I was raised by a mother who never gave her kids a compliment. She wasn't honest. Uh, she was Mexican. For example, I talked to tell her that the President of the United States had not wanted me to be chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. She responded, Didn't think I'm impressed. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I adored her. She was a wonderful mother. She was just preparing me to deal with the U.S. Uh, this anecdote may explain why I'm uncomfortable in situations today. When people praise how much I've accomplished, my immediate response is to realize how much more I should have done. I've been very fortunate to have enjoyed some success in my life. In fact, a level of success beyond the expectations of the people I came from, Sicilians and Mexicans who were born among the working poor. They were all, to quote the Gospel of St. Matthew, the salt of the earth. The some of the apples were a bit saltier than they needed to be. I have never forgotten where I came from. Last month, I received a bunch of letters written by the students at a school in my old neighborhood, a rough part of Southwest LA. Uh, those of you who have seen Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, which was filmed in my hometown, know who Pulp Fiction it is. Uh, I did a talk at this school. Folks there mostly don't grow up speaking English. One kid wrote that he was proud to meet someone from his neighborhood who had truly exceeded in life. What I think about what helped me exceed in life. I know that I have the most to my family and the Catholic schools, the two institutions that stood for my early years. I will not praise my family here. They were good and generous Latin people who have survived immigration, poverty, war, and discrimination with dignity and good humor. 
I mentioned them now only to remind the graduates to consider how much they owe their families. And not just talking about four years of American tuition. There are certain parents that would be happy to provide the kids with a detailed check complete with check stones. I do want to express my gratitude to the church that educated me. I spent 12 years in Catholic schools before I traded down to Stanford and Harvard. I was taught first by the Sisters of Providence and then by the Methodists. Pre-Vatican II parochial schools are now lost by the legendary cities of Nineveh and Tyre to the mists of history. And they appear are mostly as the subjects of comedy. But they were an amazing and mysterious place for a six-year-old child to enter. The rose nuns dressed in that formidable black and white cloth tablets that did the mass seemed as awesome and otherworldly to us as the blue skinned aliens of that guitar. Why am I grateful? Well, for seven years, Sister Camille Cecile gave me two piano lessons a week at the cost of almost three dollars a month. She started me by teaching me the keys and eventually had me playing Bach and Beethoven. She took us to our first symphony concert. And after Sister Damien kept me after school because she could barely understood standing the word I spoke in class. Did she yell at me? No. She gave me elocution lessons three times a week, eventually making me memorize and recite poetry. You can see what those lessons led to. In high school, Charles successfully drilled me in Latin, not only prepared me to discover Virgil, Horace, and Catullus, but also to understand the deeper roots of English. Meanwhile, Mark Tiffin's long instructed me in theology for two years, requiring weekly analytical essays. The experience which first taught me how to think logically and write clearly. And finally, Brother John McCluskey introduced me to Shakespeare. He was a man of considerable girth who often got so excited at his attentions that he climbed on top of his desk to bellow out his favorite lines. Thereby, by not only teaching me Shakespeare, but the divine madness of poetry. Latin, theology, music, poetry, rhetoric. By the time that I got to Stanford, I had a superb 12th century education, which wasn't a bad way to be prepared for the late 20th century. But the teachers did something more important. They challenged me to take my life seriously, to search for vocation, to view the actions of each day in the light of a larger mission, and they embodied the spirit of service. Brother Charles, Sister Mary Damien. These names remind us that the metaphors God has given us to understand Him come mostly from the family. When met with my own flesh and blood family as a child, I was educated by sisters, brothers, fathers, and one particularly formidable mother superior. I was a poor, special kid on whom they showered riches. I thought, Catholics, I am a pilgrim and a sinner. Life is an astonishing but difficult journey. What a blessing to have started out surrounded by such people. When I feel lost or confused, I try to remember where I came from. It's not a bad way to get your bearings. And the life is full of amazements. Today, it brought up to play a football stadium. Thank you, Dr. Dave.
Thank you, Mr. Jr. So it's hard to have a gift to someone who is not only very successful, but who's been successful in an exemplary way, whose life exemplifies the values and principles on which this university is built, and which it tries to instill in us who have the privilege to work and study here. We could see you in your speech, your gratitude to parents, to teachers, to your church, to your school, to the state that maybe you win an award, your first step is what more could I have done? That's safe to instill us all here today. And I hope to instill many more poets to play in this football arena. Thank you very much.